ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम सुनील वर्मा एंड विस मी इज सायरा मुश्तबा द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी कॉल्स फॉर म्यूचुअल को ऑपरेशन अमंग ब्रिक नेशन इन ग्लोबल पोस्ट कोविड रिकवरी एनडीएस प्रेजिडेंशियल कैंडिडेट द्रौपदी मुर्मू टू फाइल हर नॉमिनेशन टूडे वाई एस आर कांग्रेस प्रेजिडेंट एंड आंध्र प्रदेश चीफ मिनिस्टर जगन मोहन रेड्डी एक्सटेंड सपोर्ट टू द्रौपदी मुर्मू रेबल शिवसेना एम एल एज डिक्लेयर एक नाथ शिंदे एज देर लीडर इंडियन एयरफोर्स टू स्टार्ट रजिस्ट्रेशन अंडर अग्निपथ रिक्रूटमेंट स्कीम टूडे जम्मू एंड कश्मीर टू होस्ट जी ट्वेंटी मीटिंग्स इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री फाइव मेंबर को ऑर्डिनेशन कमेटी First consignment of India's earthquake relief assistance for people of Afghanistan reaches Kabul. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says center is monitoring flood situation in Assam and will provide all assistance to the state. IMD says southwest monsoon will cover the entire country by July the 6th. And in cricket, Indian Eves register 34 run victory over Sri Lanka in first T20 international at Dambulla. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has stressed that mutual cooperation among BRICS member countries can make a useful contribution in the global post-COVID recovery. He said the side effects of the COVID pandemic have come down, but its effects are still visible on the global economy. The Prime Minister was addressing the 14th BRICS summit virtually yesterday. आपकी टीम से मिले सहयोग के लिए भी मैं धन्यवाद व्यक्त करना चाहता हूं एसएनसी लगातार तीसरे वर्ष हम कोविड महामारी की चुनौतियों के बीच वर्चुअल रूप में मिल रहे हैं हालांकि वैश्विक स्तर पर महामारी का प्रकोप पहले की तुलना में कम हुआ है लेकिन इसके अनेक दुष्प्रभाव अभी भी वैश्विक अर्थव्यवस्था में दिखाई दे रहे हैं वैश्विक अर्थव्यवस्था की गवर्नेंस के बारे में हम ब्रिक्स सदस्य देशों का नजरिया काफी समान रहा है और इसलिए हमारा आपसी सहयोग वैश्विक पोस्ट कोविड रिकवरी में उपयोगी योगदान दे सकता है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड ब्रिक्स मेंबर कंट्रीज हैव वेरी सिमिलर अप्रोच रिगार्डिंग द गवर्नेंस ऑफ द ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड को ऑपरेशन इन सेवल एरियाज हैज बेनिफिटेड द सिटीजन्स ऑफ द मेंबर कंट्रीज पिछले वर्षों में हमने ब्रिक्स में कई संस्थागत सुधार किए हैं जिनसे इस संगठन की प्रभावशीलता बढ़ी है यह भी प्रसन्नता का विषय है कि हमारी न्यू डेवलपमेंट बैंक की सदस्यता में भी वृद्धि हुई है ऐसे कई क्षेत्र हैं जहां हमारी आपसी सहयोग से हमारे नागरिकों के जीवन को डायरेक्ट लाभ मिल रहा है जैसे वैक्सीन आर सेंटर की स्थापना कस्टम डिपार्टमेंट्स के बीच समन्वय साझा सैटेलाइट कंसल्टेशन की व्यवस्थापना फार्मा प्रोडक्ट्स का पारंपरिक रेगुलेशन का आदि इस तरह के प्रैक्टिकल कदम ब्रिक्स को एक यूनिक अंतर्राष्ट्रीय संगठन बनाते हैं जिसका फोकस सिर्फ बातचीत तक सीमित नहीं है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड ब्रिक्स मेंबर कंट्रीज हैव आल्सो स्ट्रेंथेंड पीपल टू पीपल कॉन्टैक्ट बाय एनहांसिंग कम्युनिकेशन ब्रिक्स यूथ समिट्स ब्रिक्स स्पोर्ट्स और हमारे सिविल सोसाइटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और थिंक टैंक्स के बीच संपर्क बढ़ाकर हमने अपना पीपल टू पीपल कांटेक्ट भी मजबूत किया है मुझे विश्वास है कि आज की चर्चा से हमारे ब्रिक्स संबंधों को और मजबूत करने के कई सुझाव निकलेंगे मिस्टर मोदी थैंक्स द ब्रिक्स मेंबर कंट्रीज फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग योगा इवेंट्स ऑन द इंटरनेशनल डे ऑफ योगा Chinese President Xi Jinping, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro and Russian President Vladimir Putin were also present during the virtual summit. India's presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu will file her nomination today. The former Jharkhand governor arrived in New Delhi yesterday. She met Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu, Home Minister Amit Shah and Defence Minister Rajnath Singh. She also met BJP President JP Nadda and other top leaders of the party. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said in a tweet, "Ms Murmu's presidential nomination has been appreciated across India by all sections of the society." He said, "Draupadi Murmu's understanding of grassroots problems and vision for India's development is outstanding." 
Meanwhile, Vice Our Congress President and Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Jagan Mohan Reddy has extended support to Draupadi Murmu as presidential candidate of the NDA. The party said that Jagan Mohan Reddy believes that it falls in line with the emphasis he has always given to the representation of the SCs, STs, backward classes and minority communities. Vice Our Congress Rajya Sabha MP Vijay Sai Reddy and Lok Sabha MP Mithun Reddy will be present during the filing of nomination by Ms. Murmu today. Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister Jairam Thakur told AIR News that this is a historic moment as a tribal woman has been nominated for the topmost post of the country. के ऐतिहासिक पल है भारत के इतिहास में जब एक ट्राइबल महिला को सर्वोच्च पद पर जो है वो करने के लिए तय किया है हमारे पार्टी के राष्ट्रीय नेतृत्व ने आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी को बधाई देता हूँ पार्टी के राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष जगत प्रकाश नड्डा जी को अमित शाह जी को और विशेष तौर से द्रौपदी मुर्मू जी जिस बैकग्राउंड से है वो महिला होने के साथ साथ में ट्राइबल भी है और बहुत विकट और कठिन परिस्थितियों के दौर में जिंदगी के सारी चीजों को देखा उनने और उसके बाद समाज के लिए एक जज्बे के साथ काम करने की एक जो लगन है उन सारी बातों को ध्यान में रखते हुए प्रधानमंत्री जी ने और हमारे केंद्रीय नेतृत्व ने जो तय किया है मैं सोचता हूँ ये ऐतिहासिक निर्णय है जो लंबे समय तक याद किया जाएगा और निश्चित रूप से हमें ये संदेश आया है कि आज राष्ट्रपति जी के नॉमिनेशन की प्रक्रिया में हम सब लोगों को शामिल होना है Opposition's presidential candidate Yashwant Sinha will file his nomination on Monday. The last day for filing of nominations is 29th of June. The polls, if necessary, will be held on 18th July, and counting will be taken up on 21st July. The rebel MLAs of Shiv Sena have released a video unanim- unanimously choosing Eknath Shinde as the leader. In a video released from the Guwahati Hotel, where they are currently lodged, the rebel Maharashtra MLAs authorized Mr. Shinde to take any decision. The visually elated Shiv Sena MLAs have threatened the existence of the Maha Vikas Aghadi MBA government in Maharashtra while challenging Uddhav Thackeray's decision to form an unnatural alliance with the Nationalist Congress Party (NCP) in Congress. The Shinde camp has asked the Sena chief to ally with the BJP for the sake of Hindutva. Our Mumbai correspondent reports that Shiv Sena is trying hard to save the MBA government in Maharashtra and using various tactics to pressurize the rebel MLAs. Similarly the rift in the constituent parties of the MBA government is also widening with a continuously changing political scenario in the state more in this report Shiv Sena on Thursday sought disqualification of its 12 MLAs including Eknath Shinde failing to attend the legislative party meet and filed a petition before deputy speaker of the legislative assembly Shiv Sena's delegation met Narhari Jirwal yesterday and demanded action against the 12 MLAs but Eknath Shinde has dared Shiv Sena not to threaten them and said that he knows their gimmicks and has the knowledge of the law very well he said that instead the action should be taken against them as they have said in this letter without having sufficient number Shinde has also wrote a letter to the deputy speaker of Maharashtra assembly and also sent a copies to the governor and secretary of legislative council which has signatures of 37 shiv sena mlas this letter has sought the approval for his appointment as the leader of the shiv sena legislative party and also the appointment of bharat shet gogavle as the chief whip of the party shailesh patil ar news mumbai registration process for recruitment of the first batch of agnivirs in the indian air force under the newly launched agnipath scheme is beginning from today Interested candidates can apply for the recruitment process online on the official website at agnipathvayu.cdac.in. Minister of State for Defence Ajay Bhatt said the youth who are interested in joining the army may begin registering themselves from today. एयर फोर्स में यानी कि वायुसेना में आज से प्रार्थना पत्र देना प्रारंभ हो गया है आप कोई भी हमारे युवक सीधे सीधे ऑनलाइन अपना प्रार्थना पत्र दे सकते हैं और उसके लिए बाकायदा पोर्टल है उसमें कहीं से कहीं शंका करने की आवश्यकता नहीं है इसी प्रकार से आर्मी हमारी जुलाई के प्रथम सप्ताह से आवेदन लेना प्रारंभ होगा जैसा पहले कहा है तीनों जो हमारे अंग है सेना के तो उसमें अपॉइंटमेंट होने नियुक्ति होनी प्रारंभ हो जाएगी तो इसमें जो कहीं पर भी हमारे जवान हमारे युवक देश प्रेम के लिए समर्पित हैं सभी लोग जो उसमें ऑनलाइन अप्लाई करना चाहें तो आज से एयरफोर्स में प्रारंभ करें As per the notification released by Indian Air Force, the online registrations for Agnivirs will begin from 10 a.m. There is no change in the process of induction, entry-level qualification, and examination syllabus. 
All enrollments in Air Force will take place only through Agnivir Vayu. Online exam will be conducted at 250 centers across the country from the 24th of July to the 31st of July. The recruitment process will be completed by the end of this year. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi calls for mutual cooperation among BRICS nations in global post-COVID recovery. NDA's presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu to file her nomination today. YSR Congress President and Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Jagan Mohan Reddy extends support to Draupadi Murmu. Rebel Shiva Sena MLAs declare Eknath Shinde as their leader. Indian Air Force to start registration under Agnipath recruitment scheme today. Jammu and Kashmir to host G20 meetings in 2023. Five-member coordination committee formed for the purpose. First consignment of India's earthquake relief assistance for people of Afghanistan reaches Kabul. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says Centre is monitoring flood situation in Assam and will provide all assistance to the state. IMD says southwest monsoon will cover the entire country by 6th of July. And in cricket, Indian East registers 34-run victory over Sri Lanka in first T20 international at Tambula. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. कंपटीशन के अगर आप कर रहे हैं तैयारी तो उनके लिए ऑल इंडिया रेडियो पर हम लाए हैं अभ्यास एक ऐसा कार्यक्रम जिसमें आप पूछेंगे सवाल व्हाट्सएप नंबर 9289094044 पर या फिर ईमेल करेंगे abhyas.airnews@gmail.com पर और हमारे विशेषज्ञ देंगे इसका जवाब आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों आरोप विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो The Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir will host the 2023 meetings of the G20, an influential group of the world's major economies. The UT government has set up a five-member high-level committee for overall coordination of the meetings. Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goyal was appointed as India's Sherpa for the G20 in September 2021. According to the Ministry of External Affairs India will hold the G20 presidency from December the 1st 2022 and convene the first G20 leaders summit in 2023 India's representation at G20 summits has been led by Prime Minister Modi since 2014 बर्फ से ढके पहाड़ हवा के साथ झूमते चीड़ चिनार झीलों पर तैरते शिकारे हरी भरी घाटियों के दिलकश नजारे आकाशवाणी समाचार आपके लिए लेकर आया है जम्मू कश्मीर विशेष श्रृंखला एक नई सुबह हम बात करते हैं विकास की निवेश की पर्यटन की संस्कृति की और रोज हो रहे बदलावों की एफ एम गोल्ड आरोप सुनिए हर शुक्रवार रात नौ बजकर पंद्रह मिनट आरोप आकाशवाणी समाचार की विशेष प्रस्तुति जम्मू कश्मीर एक नई सुबह In Assam the flood situation remains grim despite slight improvement in Brahmaputra valley. The state government has further expedited the response and recovery services including deployment of additional resources to the severely flood affected Borak valley districts. In view of the serious flood situation in the Borak valley, the state government has deployed eight teams of NDRF apart from the army, paramilitary forces, SDRF and Assam police personnel. The Borak Valley flood affected people can contact 1079 which is toll free and 9401044617 for emergencies. During the last 24 hours, 7 people lost their lives due to flood in the state. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said the center is continuously monitoring the flood situation in Assam and is working closely with the state government to provide all possible assistance. He prayed for the safety and well-being of all those in affected areas and assured all possible support. 
In a series of tweets, Mr. Modi said, Assam Chief Minister Himant Biswasarama, ministers of the Assam government and officials are working round the clock in the districts and helping those who have suffered. The monsoon session of Bihar State Legislature will begin today. The five-day session will conclude on the 30th of June. The first supplementary budget of current financial year will be presented in the House today. Our correspondent reports that the session is likely to be stormy as opposition parties have decided to raise various issues including what they call deteriorating law and order situa- situation. Assembly Speaker Vijay Kumar Sinha appealed to all parties to ensure smooth conduct of the session so that maximum issues of public importance could be taken up. Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr. Mansik Mandviya chaired a meeting with key experts and officials yesterday in view of an upsurge of COVID-19 cases in some states. Dr. Mandviya stressed on the need to focus on districts reporting high case positivity and undertake adequate testing to assess and control the spread of infection. He directed the officials to continue to focus on surveillance and whole genome sequencing to scan for any possible mutation. The minister directed officials to increase the pace of vaccination in districts reporting high cases. Meanwhile, more than 196 crore 75 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been administered in the country so far. Over 11 lakh 98 thousand vaccine doses were administered yesterday. The first consignment of India's earthquake relief assistance for the people of Afghanistan has reached Kabul. It was handed over by the Indian team there. The External Affairs Ministry said further consignment will follow. Meanwhile, an Indian technical team reached Kabul yesterday and has been deployed in the Indian Embassy. The team will closely monitor and coordinate with various stakeholders for the effective delivery of humanitarian assistance. Another Indian team had visited Kabul to oversee the delivery operations of India's humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan and met with senior members of the Taliban. The External Affairs Ministry said during the visit, an assessment of the security situation was also carried out. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle. We remember nationalist historian Vishwanath Kashinath Rajwade, who was born on the 24th of June 1863 in Raigad district of Maharashtra. Popularly known as Itihasacharya Rajwade, Vishwanath is considered to be one of the first historians to undertake an immense research of glorious Maratha history by visiting hundreds of villages and historical places all over India and gathering thousands of historical greatly influenced by scholarly teachers like Ramakrishna Gopal Bhandarkar, Vishnu Shastri Krishna Shastri Chipronkar, lexicographer Parsharam Tatya Gurbole and Kavya Etihaz Sangrahkar Sane. However, he was a big critic of the model of higher education in India which, according to him, did not help original thinking or research. Rajwari did not seek British employment which he considered was indirect slavery. He started translating world classics in Marathi and started a monthly called Bhashantar. Through the magazine, he brought works of Western philosophers and scholars such as Plato, Aristotle and Edward Gibbon and also Indian scholars like Shankaracharya in Marathi. <laughs> Rajwade was a rare combination of a researcher, history grammarian, social scientist and etymologist. 
He was unhappy with Maratha history books written by British historians that tried to establish conqueror's view of subjugated people. Rajwadi wanted to present an unbiased point of view. To this end, he toured the whole of Maharashtra region and studied art, architecture, iconography, social life, language, literature, customs and folk traditions of the region. He published 22 volumes of Marathancha Itihasachi Sadhani, Sources of the History of Marathas. He got the oldest commentary on Gyaneshwari and brought out its earliest grammatical form. He edited Radha Madhav Vilas Champu by Jairam Pindye, dating to Chhatrapati Shivaji's father's time, which has special bearing on the history of contemporary Karnataka. He explored etymology, the study of the origin of words, and discovered several old rituals and practices. <laughs> In 1910, Rajwadi founded Bharat Itihas Sanshodhak Mandar at Pune and kept all his works and historical papers in the custody of the Mandar. A sage-like scholar known for austere habits and long hours of work and incessant travelling, Rajwadi died on the 31st of December 1921. AIR News salutes the great nationalist. We also remember Martyr Ranjit Singh, who was born on the 24th of June 1924 at Ludhiana, Punjab. Initially, Singh served in the British Indian Army, but joined the Indian National Army in 1942 in Singapore and served as Sepoy in the Gandhi Brigade. Ranjit Singh confronted the Allied forces in Arakan, Myanmar and died fighting them in 1944. AIR News salutes the brave son of the soil. We also remember Kamruddin Khan, who participated in the first war of Indian independence. Khan was captured by company troops in the course of their attacks and put on trial for aiding and abetting the rebellion against the British. He was sentenced to imprisonment for 10 years with hard labor in iron. Kamruddin Khan died in captivity on the 24th of June 1859 in the Andaman Islands. We salute the brave son of the soil. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadika Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Moving on, Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Thakur will interact with Ministers and Secretaries of States and Union Territories in charge of Youth Affairs and Sports in a two-day national conference beginning in Kevaria today. He will deliver the keynote address at the inauguration. Ahead of the conference, the minister said that the Statue of Unity at Kevaria is attracting attention not only in India, but also worldwide. Rajya ki sarkare, Kendra sarkar, state associations, national sports federation, NGOs or corporate jagat. Ki sab ek athe mil kar aayenge to khel aur khiladiyon ko vikas bhi hoga, suvidhaayen bhi milenge aur pradarshan bhi pehle se achcha hoga. Ye hamara sohbhagya hai ki Pradhan Mantri Modi ji netratav karte hai aur khel aur khiladiyon ki chinta bhi karte hai, unse baatchit bhi karte hai. Hum sab mil kar mansan karenge ki khelon ki dhrishti se aage isko kaise aage badhaya jai. Speaking to media persons at Ahmedabad Airport on his way to Kevaria, Mr. Thakur said sports persons have been empowered by increasing sports facilities in the country. He said athletes and sports persons will get better facilities if the centre, state governments, state associations, NGOs and corporates come together. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar has said that India, as the world's largest democracy, offers numerous examples for the Commonwealth. He addressed the CHOGM Foreign Minister's Plenary in Rwanda yesterday on the theme of democracy, peace and governance. He said India's digital backbone is of particular relevance. The minister also highlighted the importance of collectively addressing the crucial challenges of the present times, including post-COVID recovery, climate change and ongoing global conflicts. The southwest monsoon is likely to cover the entire country by July the 6th, India Meteorological Department IMD said that the monsoon normally covers the entire country by July the 8th. 
After an early start, the monsoon had been pushing late over South Peninsular India and Central India in the absence of favourable systems. As an on date, the northern limit of monsoon LLM continues to pass through Porbandar and Vadodara in Gujarat, Shivpuri and Reva in Madhya Pradesh and Churk in Uttar Pradesh. On to sports now. In cricket, Indian East registered a convincing 34-run victory over Sri Lanka in the first T20 international in Dambula yesterday, taking a 1-0 lead in the three-match series. Chasing the target of 139 runs, the hills were reduced to 27 for 3 within 7 overs. They scored 104 for 5 in the stipulated 20 overs. Sri Lankan chase was never trouble-free, thanks to left-arm spinner Radha Yadav's early strike and tight bowling by seamer Dipti Puja Vastrakar in the middle overs. Yadav dismissed dangerous-looking Sri Lankan captain C. Atapattu and Harshita Madhavi in just three balls. Next match will also be played in Dambula tomorrow. Indian junior women's hockey team recorded a comprehensive 4-1 victory against the United States in the UNIFA Under-23 tournament in Dublin yesterday. Anu netted a brace while Nikita, Topo and Vaishnavi Palke scored one goal each for India. Hannah Miller scored the lone goal for America. In Ladakh, the 26th Sindhu Darshan Yatra will be inaugurated today. The four-day yatra will be inaugurated at Sindhu Ghat near Shea village in Leh today. Jagat Guru Shankaracharya of Bhatrika Ashram of Joshimat will be the chief guest at the opening. The Postal Department will release a special commemorative stamp depicting Buddhism, the Himalayas and the Sindhu River today. And now let us have a look at the weather forecast for today. The National Capital Delhi will have a mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature was 24 and the maximum will be 39 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. Chennai will also have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Mumbai will have heavy rain in fact. Kolkata will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Vishakhapattanam and Bengaluru will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Hyderabad and Tiruvananthapuram will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Guwahati will have partly cloudy sky with the possibility of the development of thunder and lightning. Imphal, Agartala, Kohima, Shillong, Aizwal and Itanagar will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Gangtok will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. And now an overview of today's newspapers. A study published in Lancet Journal reveals that the COVID-19 vaccines may have cut mortality to a third of what they would otherwise have been, reports Hindustan Times. The Pioneer reports that the Enforcement Directorate has accepted Congress President Sonia Gandhi's request to defer her questioning in the National Herald case, which will now be in late July. India restores its diplomatic presence in Afghanistan, writes Hindustan Times. Indian technical team reaches Kabul Embassy. Indian Air Force flies in quake relief, reports the Indian Express. BRICS supports dialogue between Russia and Ukraine, headlines the Hindu. Quoting Prime Minister Modi, the statesman headlines, BRICS to play key role in post-COVID global economic recovery. The Tribune quotes a study that estimates that 25% of Haryana's informal workers, approximately 52 lakh people, are cooped up in makeshift workplaces. And finally, the Times of India reveals an exciting 4,000-year-old archaeological find in UP's Manpuri, which includes a large number of weapons. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi calls for mutual cooperation among BRICS nations in global post-COVID recovery. India's presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu to file her nomination today. YSR Congress President and Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Jagan Mohan Reddy extends support to Draupadi Murmu. Rebel Shiv Sena MLAs declare Eknath Shinde as their leader. Indian Air Force to start registration under Agnipath recruitment scheme today. Jammu and Kashmir to host G20 meetings in 2023. Five member coordination committee formed for the purpose. First consignment of India's earthquake relief assistance for people of Afghanistan reaches Kabul. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says Santa is monitoring flood situation in Assam and will provide all assistance to the state. IMD says Southwest monsoon will cover the entire country by July the 6th 
and in cricket, Indian Eves register 34-run victory over Sri Lanka in first T20 international at Dambula. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.